the Wonder Girls. The Black Shirts. In Britain in the 1930s, Black Shirts was the nickname for the British Union of Fascists, who, with their leader, Oswald Mosley, was a group of people with ideas similar to Hitler. They didn't like Jewish people, people with a disability, or people with brown or black skin. Like Hitler, they did like people with white skin and blonde hair. They described these people as Aryan, and believed Aryans would become a master race to make Britain and Germany great again. But in the 1930s, there were enough people in Britain to stop the black shirts, good people like the men and women of East London, who, on the 4th of October 1936, prevented these British fascists in their black shirts from marching down Cable Street in Stepney. Chapter 1, The Goldilocks Girl, Part 1 For most of her 10 or 11 years, the London streets had been baby's home. But on that sunny autumn day, London didn't seem too homely. According to Mom, America was the land of the free, and it was where they should be. Now that Mole was with the angels, Baby and her sister, Fingers, were setting off at last. If only she could find the little tyke. Baby pushed up her sleeves and burrowed through the angry crowd. Fingers, where are you? she shouted from way down her throat. But in all the shouting of they shall not pass, her words were as lost as a drop of rain in old Father Thames. Baby shimmied up a lamppost on Gardner's corner. Her old green jacket slipped off her shoulders and gathered at her elbows in silky folds. With a metal post worn between her legs, she looked desperately across the sea of heads for her sister. Baby saw coppers waving truncheons, more on horseback, clip-clopping high and mighty through the crowds, and she saw rubbish hurled at that other horrible lot in their black shirts. She knew who they were. She'd felt their spit and heard their nasty words. She didn't see fingers. And she didn't see the rotten old cabbage that smacked the side of her head with such a thump it made her lose her grip. Baby hit the gutter with a thud. People pushing and shoving round her swayed like they were on a boat. Then all of a sudden the sky grew dark as thunder. A horse reared on its hind legs and neighed for England. It stretched up and up, clip-cloppy hooves pawing at the air, then down and down to trample baby into the cobbles. She gasped, but her lungs had been whipped from inside her chest. She curled up into a ball, shut her eyes tight and hoped it would be quick. But a tug, so strong her arm could have come out of its socket, yanked her out from underneath the horse. When baby opened her eyes, Looking down at her from a brightly blue sky was an angel from heaven. The noise of the crowds faded away and in her head baby heard singing. And like the windows in church, a face inside a golden halo peered down at her, glowing with kindness. For a moment the world stopped. Had baby died already? The angel spoke. I have you, it said bumping Baby over the curb and dragging her across the pavement. And Baby found herself not dead, but with her head resting on the lap of a girl in a smart blue coat with two thick plaits of hair like gold. You are all right? asked her the girl in an accent that didn't quite belong in London. Everything hurt. The smack on Baby's head that had made her teeth chatter, the grazes on her legs from the drag over the stones, and the bones all down the side that hit the street. Uh, Yeah, I think so. Men and women, jackets flapping and shirts untucked, rushed past on the pavement. Baby pulled her legs up tight to her chest and tried to focus on the bright blue eyes staring at her. Then she remembered. Fingers, have you seen her? The girl reached for Baby's hand. They are good, she said feeling each one of Baby's grubby fingers in turn. The girl's hand was cool and soft. For a moment, Baby imagined it stroking her cheek like Moll used to. They? No, not them. Fingers. Her real name's Florrie and she's my sister and I've lost her. Oh, I see, said the girl, 
gently laying baby's hand back in her lap. You, you can stand? I expect so, said baby. Then we are better in here. The girl helped baby up and took her into the shade of a shop doorway. She scraped golden wisps of hair off her face. I think the fascists want to go to Cable Street, she said, glancing over her shoulder. It will be safer if we wait. What is your name? Baby, said Baby. The girl tilted her head to one side. Baby? Yeah, that's right. Well, I am glad that we met, Baby, she said, shaking Baby's hand. The girl was truly lovely. Her clothes were so fine, or would have been if not for the dust from the street. Her Goldilocks plaits looked like a mild brush in once upon a time, and she sounded so kind and full of goodness that Baby forgot about everything. If somebody told her that all she had to do from now on was stand there in the gardener's shop doorway gazing at this Goldilocks girl, Baby would have been happy. But this girl didn't look like your normal kid on the street. Though it was warm as a summer's day, her coat was done up smart for winter and tucked inside the collar were the folds of a lady's pink silk scarf. Where's your ma? asked Baby. A tear welled up in the girl's eye. I, th- I think my mother is in prison now with my father. It was not safe for me in Germany, so she sent me to England to find family. But I think they have gone too. To prison, you mean? I don't know. The girl gripped her hands together so tight her knuckles went white. Will you help me? And I will help you, yes? Of course, baby would. But with a jolt, she remembered fingers. Would fingers mind if the Goldilocks girl came too? Baby couldn't imagine fingers not minding, but there was nothing else for it. The angry men and women, the ones trying to stop the black shirts from marching, were running now, their feet smacking the pavement like wet fish. Loads and loads of them ran past. But just like on the beach at Canvey Island, when one minute the sea's round your ankles and the next it isn't, all the angry folk got pulled away somewhere else. Though Baby could still hear the rumpus in the distance, round her and the Goldilocks girl was still. Baby remembered that she'd said her name, but she didn't know the girl's. What are you called? she asked. But before the girl could answer, the sharp, clean sound of a pair of well-heeled boots disturbed their little pool of quiet. The girl stiffened pressed herself against the shop door. She pulled Baby back into the doorway. Hide me, she whispered urgently. 